Okay, here we go. I thought I'd make a little video um, before I start doing the insulation. Figured this would be my last chance. So I'm just gonna go through here um, for reference as well as to show you guys you know, basic uh, framing, electrical, plumbing, how, how it's set up or how I set it up. I, I do, um, you know, everything I can to meet code uh, and exceed it. So figured I'll just take you through a quick kind of general walkthrough so you can kind of see the overall layout. And then um, I'll take it bay by bay. But first I'll talk about insulation. So um, I believe we're held this is Phoenix, Arizona, and I think we're held to the 2018 IECC um, energy values code or whatever. It, it, it reflects um, energy efficiency that you need to reach, and here we got to get the ceiling to R38. So what I've done um, for breathability, I got a one inch gap right up here, one inch gap in my blocking, and then finally a one inch gap uh, at the fascia blocking and the way that I'm going to be uh, building this is um, baffles and then a uh, R6 foam insulation and then R30 faced insulation. Um, so it's a, it's a combo of different types of insulations and air gaps that I'm using to get me a total of R38 and uh, here it is right here. So this is the um, baffles, which is the first thing that's going to go in, it just gets stapled in. That gives us about R1, R1.5. Then one inch of the thermal um, uh, faced insulator, one inch gives us R6. And then finally the R30 batting. And then this is what I'm going to be using for the walls. So, you know, the R1.5 plus R30 plus R6. Uh, R37.5, I think. And then, you know, you factor in the tongue and groove, which I'm going to be using, the sheathing, the uh, uh, even the shingles have insulation value. So all in all, we'll be at about R39. All right, so let's start from uh, from here. This is a countertop area. I've got four different outlets separated on two different circuits. Um, I fireproofed every single hole that has a wire coming through it. You can tell by the orange uh, coloration. Uh, I think generally you're mostly just supposed to spray foam um, the entrances that go into the attic space, so like this type of stuff. But I had a bunch of leftovers in the can, so I went with, you know, everywhere. So this is the um, countertop area. I have a inch and a half um, ABS uh, with a little clean out at the bottom here. It, it goes into a two inch. Um, I've used PEX plying for everything and I've plated basically everywhere um, where the uh, either wire or plumbing piece is less than an inch and a quarter from um, the edge of the two by four. Because I'm gonna be screwing in sheetrock, I use one and a quarter inch screws. So half inch to the sheetrock and then three quarters of an inch into the actual stud, gives us about an inch and a quarter. And so anything that would be too close to the edge of the stud is gonna get pierced by a sheetrock screw. So whenever I kind of worry about that, uh, and this is not just me, this is code, you, you gotta plate it. So that's why you see all of these plates here for the plumbing, the insulation, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the wiring. And then here I've got hurricane ties that I use on every single rafter. This is either an H1 or H3. Um, it helps with uplift. I prefer it over toenailing. And then moving on to the next base here, um, this is the outlet for the bathroom vanity. Um, it's also on a dedicated circuit. So, so far we have three dedicated circuits and you can actually see my, these are all of my circuits clearly labeled here. I've got two for the countertops, uh, one AFCI for the light, one AFCI for the outlet, and then an AC circuit and a bath circuit. Now the AC I'm gonna be using is just a mini split. It actually runs on 120 volt lines, so it's got its own dedicated line, pretty pretty low power usage for the mini splits, which is really nice. Um, this, yeah, so this is gonna be where the uh, vanity is. You can see I've got everything plated and foam insulated. 
the vanity is an inch and a half drain or, and uh, no sorry it's a two inch drain which reduces to an inch and a half vent and then comes out here now this vent is a two inch this actually ties into the toilet which I believe toilets you need a two inch vent and then uh, the shower vent right here now this area here is a little bit loose I haven't actually set up the mixer but the mixer valve is going to go here and once that does get installed I'm going to be putting in some backing and some nailing um, it's just a bit the mixer valves back ordered right now so still waiting on that now my electric uh, J boxes are all plastic I like the plastic because you don't have to bond the box uh, the only thing with plastic you gotta remember is you have to have a staple every um, at every box within 12 inches and then every four feet after that now I staple mine a little bit more than that just because I'm kind of a kind of a neat freak but the minimum would be every four feet and at 12 inches now there's a maximum number of staples that you can use per um uh, maximum number of wires you can use per staple i can't remember what this one was i think it was two or three but i didn't take any chances so rather than putting a bunch of wires under one staple i just used different staples for a maximum of you know two wires under one staple which keeps everything pretty pretty clean so moving on in the bays here um, I have an outlet every, um, basically every 12 feet around the perimeter and then within every, within six feet of each side of the door is code, but I've done a lot more than that. Um, and then another thing too is if ever you have a wall that is under a two foot section, then that wall is going to need its own outlet, which is why this little guy right here. Uh, exists. It's very small section, seems kind of impractical and useless to have an outlet there, but code says wall smaller than two feet, uh, or, or two feet or greater, greater, sorry, you need an outlet on it. Um, outside of that, my uh, my nail plates, or my, uh, my bottom plates are all pressure treated, and I also used a gasket seal on it, which is this little pink thing, so gasket seal, um, and then the bottom plate. Now I bolted in the bottom plates first and then framed, which is why there's two of these. Normally you'd only have one bottom plate and then everything is just set in with the uh, redheads. I did redheads, uh, basically I think within 12 inches of each corner. So like one here, one there. And then I did every four feet afterwards. I, I don't think code is every four feet. I think code is every six feet, but uh, this being a pretty small building, I could, I could spare the extra bolts. It was going to help with you know uplift and stability and all that stuff. Uh, and now here are the the windows. You can kind of see the remnants of the flashing. Um, it's flashed all around, but the uh, sill, the bottom sill flashing, does come in. Uh, as for where the other flashing does not. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Talked about the plates, the electrical, um, fireproofing. Yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, comment below. Thanks.